In Poland, again very shortly, the Poland is, uh, is moving to the interesting direction. So there are lots of these B category type of machines what, what are in place uh, here in Lithuania. And uh, there was two and a half years uh, a law change that uh, said that when these licenses for the street machines are over, they will be not prolonged. So at the end of the day, in three years time roughly, approximately 50,000 of machines are disappearing from the, uh, from the um, Poland, Polish market. Of course, being honest, it's, I cannot expect that all these players who are used to playing these machines are going to the casinos. But uh, at the end of the day, we may see some increase in the revenues as well. Slovakia is pretty much stable. There was a slight uh, tax increase last year, uh, uh, gaming tax. And oh, Belarus um, is, is, a, is a small thing. So. I think we do not have too much time about uh, going through the uh, details uh, of uh, how we do the business. Three minutes, okay. But uh, anyway, we have uh, basically three components. We have the bets, we have the how, how much time uh, the clients are spent uh, in the casinos, and then we have the mathematics. So this is, this is pretty much it. And for the table games, it's, it's the speed of the game as well. And uh, of course, the most genuine thing what has, in, has been invented for the slot machines is autoplay which is not allowed here in uh, Lithuania. So basically, we are seeing that uh, lots of clients just come to the casino, put the money in, out of play, then they go to drink the beer, and, and that's their entertainment. So <laughs> uh, This illustrates that uh, we have uh, successfully run through the crisis, so all the metrics are, are going to the positive side. So uh, whatever ratios, etc. So. Again, uh, when we compare to 2008, this was just before the crisis. We had this time eight countries, more than half the casinos, and now it's, it's stabilizing and, and the trend is, is a bit upward. So, so this is good. And this is uh, gaming revenue split, so roughly 25% Estonia, uh, Latvia, then um, Lithuania, Poland, Slovakia, and Belarus. The biggest portion of the profits we are making from Latvia, there are uh, two reasons. Uh, one is the, the lowest uh, gaming tax for us, which is quite a remarkable uh, cost for us. And the other thing is purely, purely operational thing. So w when you want to enter into the casino here in, uh, in Lithuania, uh, the law says that you need to do this uh, registration procedure, you have to show your ID, etc. So, uh, <coughs> and this is what uh, in Latvia does not exist. So basically we can operate one slot hole with only one employee, and this is really efficient. So in, in Lithuania we cannot do it. And uh, when it comes to the EBITDA, even during these very hard times, uh, we have always presented a positive, uh, positive EBITDA number. And, and this EBITDA margin is is going to the, let's say, to the, our normal level as well. And when it comes to, again, some valuation things, I just read about the news uh, today. So LHV, who is doing some ana analysis on us, and as well as Enskild or uh, Swedbank, they quote that the fair shares price is roughly in the range of uh, 1.6 to even 1.8 euros. Now it's 1.25, so and of course, when you compare uh, this EBITDA to the enterprise value, enterprise value is roughly, let's say, market cap 190 less uh, some 50 million cash, which is around 140 or 150, which is enterprise value, then the EBITDA multiplier is, is less than even five. So I think it's it's very good time to jump into the to the uh, <laughs> to invest into the Olympic or vice versa, if, or from the other angle, when we are comparing uh, free cash flow, then it's again uh, more than 30 million euros, so, so the multiplier is, is less, than, uh, less than five, which is quite, um, not quite, very good, I would say, honestly. And the last slide about the future. Uh, <coughs> we have been talking uh, lots, of lots, of, uh, lots of years about uh, building a new casino hotel in Tallinn, 
the project is still not approved, so I'm not. Uh, there is nothing too much to talk about it. At least uh, one new country, so we are working really aggressively, and and I want to believe that uh, even during this year we we may see our flag in, in, in the new country. We are focused on the online gaming as well, so we have been established ourselves in Estonia. Now the focus is really outside Estonia. And as I said, the law turns more favorable in, in Latvia. The law turns favorable here in uh, Lithuania. And it's kind of obvious uh, these are our home markets and, and uh, this is the first step our, that we are doing uh, uh, after the stone. So, but, uh, but it's not only the Baltics, so we are, we are actively uh, focusing on the, on the other countries as well. For the Ukrainian market, I... No, when uh, maybe some, uh, some people know the history or some not, I'm, I just do not want to waste time on that. Uh, if the question comes, of course, we may discuss it, but, uh, but uh, I hardly believe that uh, we are going to invest again in, into the Ukrainian market when it comes again possible uh, under the new law. And, of course, some new projects in Slovakia, new gaming equipment we recently introduced with the biggest uh, hardware provider and uh, IGT, the American company, uh, slot producer, uh, a new concept or new, new thing, totally new thing in, in the gaming industry, which is cloud, cloud thing. Clouds are very popular, so we have Apple clouds, etc. Uh, so the IGT cloud, which means that all the, all the you can download all the games from the internet. You have no. Basically, there are lots of lots of good things uh, you you may provide even for the clients. So, so you can order your beer or from from the machines, or or you can uh, if you want to go to the toilet, you you basically cancelling or stopping your your game in one machine, and and you go in another machine or another even casino, and you can uh, continue to play uh, from there on. So. So there are lots of opportunities.